This right here might be the most innovative tripod invention of the last decade, maybe longer. I would imagine since the fluid head. I think it's more innovative than the Peak Design tripod, which took tripods to a whole new size. This is the Small Rig Potato Jet Collab Tribex. And the unique thing about this tripod is the speed at which it deploys. So in this video, I'm gonna give you my first impressions of this tripod. I'm gonna tell you the things that I like, some of the things that I wish were a little bit different. And so if you're thinking about getting this tripod, this is the video for you. My name's Nathan LaValley. Subscribe for more content like this. Let's get right into it. So the special thing about this tripod is the way that the legs deploy. Normally when you're deploying a tripod, you have to do at minimum three latches and that's for expensive single latch per leg deploy systems. You would have a clip that you would undo at each leg and that would allow you to lift and extend. But the problem with that is that if things get unlevel, if you're not shooting on perfectly flat ground, it can be really challenging to level the tripod. So what they did was they added bowls to tripod and a bowl is where there's something you can loosen and tighten under here and it'll allow the top of the tripod to pivot about 15 degrees each way. But this tripod has a different solution to that problem. And it's a system that allows all the legs to extend and also to retract with one trigger. And it's right here. It's a pistol grip trigger and it can go in a few different positions. Now, there's a quick release button that allows you to shift it into two different locations. It locks in this location. It also locks in this vertical location. And then finally, it can go into a fully flat position and you can turn this to retract the grip, but this doesn't lock. So you can just lift it immediately into any of those positions and lock it. To get this trigger back out, you're simply gonna pull it and it'll be out. Now, the first thing I wanna note is that it works. It is truly fast to deploy and in all kinds of unique situations, and I'll show you a few unique situations later, getting this tripod flat and level is incredibly easy. It's as simple as pulling that trigger and then using the built-in levelers to actually make sure that it's fully level and releasing, and boom, you have a perfectly level tripod. If I wanted to take it lower, I do have to bring my legs together and retract it before I move on to the next setup because lowering it like this isn't really good for the legs. They're not able to properly lower since they're all pointed out. But that's not too inconvenient of a thing for retracting when the speed of putting the legs out is so incredible. So the thing about this tripod that I wish was a little bit different is the angle of this pistol grip. You can actually see when I hold it with my left hand, it's perfect. Um, I'm actually squeezing with my fingers the part of the trigger that you'd expect to be squeezing with the trigger. But on the flip side, if I'm using my right hand, what I'm actually doing is squeezing the trigger kind of backwards. It almost feels like I wish this was turned 90 degrees. Um, when I'm actually setting up the tripod, if I have that pistol grip right in front of me, I'm, I'm kind of squeezing it like a crab and it is not something that's super easy to squeeze. I wouldn't say it's hard to squeeze, but if you're just using two fingers, like you're going to have a hard time getting that squeezed. But nonetheless, if I actually get on the side of it where it's over here, right? Or if I just use my left hand and have it on the side, it's very easy to get it set. Now, let me retract this. And I want to talk for just a moment about the actual fluid head that's on this thing. And I'll just share my experience with tripods. I have had a number of tripods over the years, and this is certainly the nicest. It probably started with a super cheap aluminum tripod for 30 bucks. I used that for a time. When I got a bigger camera, I think I probably upgraded to some sort of a carbon fiber tripod. I think I actually still have that tripod. And I tried buying a fluid head and placing it on top of that tripod but it really left a lot to be desired because the fluid head I actually got wasn't super high quality. You know, fast forward a little bit further, I picked up a used ginormous aluminum Manfrotto tripod that could extend to be taller than I am. And it also had a crank to raise the center column. And that tripod was great. It was incredibly heavy though, and it was very bulky. It was not easy to transport. And so I got another tripod, um, 
a fairly common brand off Amazon. The name escapes me right now. A budget brand, $150 for a video head tripod. Again, it had multiple clasps on each leg. It had a bowl in the middle like I talked about. And the, the video head was decent on that. But when you were shooting a really long shot with a really long lens, you weren't really gonna be able to get super smooth video with that. And that's where this video head tripod comes in. So you have multiple adjustments. The first thing is you can lock the actual tilt. So the lock would be this mechanism right here. And if you spin it like that, it's locked. Now you have to clamp it down pretty hard for it to not actually move at all. See right there, it's moving. If you loosen that lock all the way, now you're relying on the dampening. And this is the dampening knob. So when I fully loosen the dampening knob, let's see here. When I fully loosen the dampening knob, I mean, I'm able to go up and down very quickly with that. As I tighten that dampening knob, it adjusts very granularly to get to a place where it can be pretty stiff, right? I'm having to put a little bit of force into it to get it to move, which is how you get those smooth tilts. Now looking at the pan knob, I was like, where is the pan knob when I first got this thing? But it's actually right here and it's a ring at the bottom near the legs of the tripod that you turn. Now this may just be my model. When I loosen it all the way, it's super fast. When I tighten it up, it's just as stiff as the other way, which is what you want. You want them to be able to match each other. So here they're matched and I can do a really smooth movement. But when I actually turn this knob, it doesn't turn smoothly. So it almost feels like there's certain parts where it meets resistance as I'm turning it. Adjusting this is a little bit cumbersome. See right there, it's a little stiff. And so I have to squeeze harder and I have to twin, twist more firmly. Likewise, you have a lock for the pan as well. That's right here. It's a small little knob. You can lock that just like that. And now you're not gonna be panning it. So I like that. I like that you have the ability to lock separate from the dampening. So I can have my setting dialed in and then I can go, okay, I need to lock this so I can carry it and I can move just like that. And it is fairly lightweight as far as a tripod that's this big and beefy is concerned. Now the interesting mechanism that I think is the most odd out of any tripod I've ever used is right here. And that's for extending the center column. I think part of the reason for that is that unless you're going really high, you don't really need the center column. You're not using it to get higher when you can so quickly and easily get the tripod higher with the pistol grip, right? But the center column nonetheless is right here. And what you have to do is you have to pull and spin this little lock and then you can use this to pull up that thumb push. So if you wanna push it down, it kinda of is one where it tightens the further you get it down. When you do that, you're able to extend that center column and you can lock it the same way and you could even flip that orange. I think that'll be black if you get this tripod later. And then the tripod is still you know, fairly stable. That center column definitely has a little bit of give in it. And so it's in my mind, a last resort, although it does let you get the tripod you know, fairly high, where at this height, let me level it. So easy to level it. I love that. At this height, you know, I can be shooting something fairly high. Now, the other thing I just want to show you here, I have my pan locked, so I'm going to unlock that, is that this, I have my tilt locked, I'm going to unlock that. This arm actually extends. So if you loosen this, you can pull it down. And this is going to be super helpful and getting smoother motions with the tripod because you have a longer fulcrum. I think that'd be the right way to say that. And so you're able to move a longer distance for a shorter pan or shorter tilt. So that is super, super handy. And when you're actually using this tripod, I'll actually drop this down. This is a little bit slow going down, kind of you have to move it around to get it to go down. I've had that with other tripods, that doesn't bother me. Again, I'm probably not gonna use that center column very much. You can fully take off that center column here by twisting right there. That actually unscrews from the bottom of the center column. And what that would allow you to do is get this tripod even lower. So at this point, with how I have this set up, if I were to extend these legs and they're pull, so you pull those tabs, you can extend them completely vertical. So you could take this tripod, theoretically, extend all those legs vertical, and then if that center column was off, you could get all the way down flat on the ground. Of course, I can't do that right now because that center column's there. Now, if I bring these legs down, 
you can lock them into a middle, a middle position where they're not vertical, not vertical, where they're not horizontal completely, but where they're not all the way down in their standard position. Let me get that in there. And that's what that looks like right there. Center column is still perfectly fine. Here I'm still pretty low and I'm getting those smooth pans and those smooth tilts. So I think I've just about covered all the features. There's other unique things like the ability to drop your tripod on with this button right here or drop your camera on with this button right here. This is tightening to actually lock your camera into place. You can also modify for both Manfrotto and DJI uh, plates here. It locks on. There's some additional holes for screws. And then you can also mount right here like a magic arm super easily. So let me tell you some things with this tripod that, um, not that I wish I had known, but I've learned from handling this tripod using it for a week or so now. Like I said, this pistol grip isn't always, you know, super convenient as far as its positioning. Um, sometimes you squeeze it and you're like, oh, I gotta squeeze it hard because of where I was standing to squeeze it. I think that's something I'm gonna learn over time and I'm gonna be able to use a little bit better. But that's something to note. It doesn't always feel good to utilize the pistol grip with the way it's positioned. It almost feels like they could have created this, and maybe I'm wrong, but they could have created this where there's a button to actually rotate that. And that would be super handy if you could rotate that pistol grip. Or even if there was a way where when you squeeze this, it allows you to rotate it. So you could squeeze it and quickly rotate when you let go, it locks. Maybe I'm asking too much. This is already a really awesome tripod with its quick deploy. The other thing that is a little bit odd, like I pointed out before, is this pan dampening. It seems like it kind of catches. It's not perfectly smooth. And the other thing that you need to know is with this tripod, you still are going to have to manually adjust these legs. You know, you'll still have to collapse the tripod by bringing those legs together. When you're going to deploy the tripod, you know, before you deploy it, you still have to open these legs. And so, you know, it's not completely removing the manual processes that you're used to with deploying a tripod, but it is so much faster to deploy the tripod than it is with, for example, that little tripod I'm shooting on right there. So this is the Tribex tripod. I'm gonna show you a few examples of some awesome and unique situations where having this kind of tripod could really come in handy and make it a lot simpler to shoot and level your shot. Maybe you're at a baseball game, you're trying to film the highest quality stable footage ever, and all the seats are taken except one's up here at the top, and you brought your tripod. Now typically the process for setting up on an uneven surface like this would be complicated. You'd have to kind of extend some legs to get it stable, and then you'd have to adjust that center bowl to make sure that it's actually level. With this tripod, this is my first time doing this, it's gonna be a lot easier. I'm gonna set those there, let that one leg extend, and boom, I'm filming now. I have the tripod, it's in a stable position. I can quickly adjust. If I need to go higher, I can go higher so easily. That is crazy. And so I can be filming now and I'm standing in the back row. I'm not getting in the way of anyone behind me. I am taking up a little bit of space there, but maybe we drop it down here. Let's try this. We drop it there. That's about as high as I could get it there. And I could sit and very easily film. Now, again, we might wanna go up and over. Maybe there's someone with a sombrero sitting in front of me. I can raise it even higher like that. We are stable and I have my arm extended. And so I'm able to film very easily. I could mount my monitor down low with this magic arm mount. And so that's, that's awesome. I could literally have my monitor right here. I could be sitting over on this side of the tripod. I could be filming like that, have my monitor right here. The camera's up high. I mean, just the speed that I was able to set up that shot is nasty. It is so nasty for someone who's used tripods on this channel for years and years and years. I've set them up because I was always filming myself. This tripod is revolutionary. Now at the end of the game, again, you know, you're gonna run into that issue of actually closing the tripod, which isn't too huge of an issue, but it is something, you know, that's gonna still take you a bit of time. But I mean, even that, that was so fast. It's awesome. Let me show you another situation. Let's say here you've been hired to film behind down on the strike zone 
which I think in a lot of leagues is actually illegal. You can't do that. But let's say you've been hired to do that for a particular game or a particular league. And you come in here and you're like, huh, how am I gonna do this? Well, what you might do is you might just pull that one leg out and drop it. Make sure it's flat and then level it. And just like that, I'm perfectly flat and level. The tripod's very stable. It's at a height that's gonna be good for what I would be doing here. And I'm shooting down, looking at the back of the batter's box, the strike zone, the umpire's back. That is so fast. That is crazy. Let's say here you're actually in the dugout and you're filming. Let's say you're filming the game. Extend my quick release, drop it down. You're filming the game. You're up against that fence there. You know, you've leveled your tripod and your team is out in the infield and outfield. They're actually playing defense right now. They're not batting. And so there's only maybe one or two players in here. You're filming out there the team and let's say a quick out comes, the inning finishes and you're like, I need to get away from the wall because all the bags are hung like here. They're gonna be in the way. They're gonna be sitting. I wanna get footage of that. You could very quickly put one leg up there and retract that leg and level it and now I'm able to shoot down the line and I'm actually filming multiple different faces kind of with a long shot. Maybe I go, I want to drop it a little bit more. You can simply drop it a little bit more and then level it. I'm level and boom, I'm not taking up much space. I'm leaning against this back wall. I'm able to get smooth footage of them coming in. And then let's say, okay, they're about to go up and bat now. I could just simply move this, pull it out here to the side, drop that leg down get it where I want it, make sure it's level, and boom, I'm filming the batting and I'm able to quickly pull it in if a ball comes my way. So that's awesome. It is so ridiculous how quickly you can go from one position to another position when before, and let's not exaggerate, it would take a minute or two minutes to set up those different shots before. But the speed that you're able to do that with this tripod, it's seconds. It takes something that was minutes and it makes it seconds. So. Let me give you some final thoughts on this tripod. If you're looking for a tripod that is fast, that kind of offsets some of the dumb things about using video tripods with smooth fluid heads, this is a great tripod. Now you're gonna pay for it. You could get a comparable tripod that has a similar style fluid head from budget brands that don't have leg extension like that, have maybe one latch on each leg for four or $500. This tripod is $800. So you are paying a premium for this new technology. But for me, it was worth it. The convenience that's added with this quick release system kind of puts it on a level playing field with a much lighter photography tripod. Although that photography tripod is much easier to carry, it's a lot lighter, it fits in the side pocket of my backpack. This tripod is so easy to deploy that when I'm reaching for a tripod to do a job, this tripod is just as convenient as that smaller tripod as long as I'm not hiking it somewhere really far. This tripod is just as convenient, it's gonna be just as easy to use and I have the added functionality of having smooth fluid hedge shooting, which is great. And you have the added functionality of being able to quickly move from one position to another, like that, just super fast. So, would I recommend this tripod? I don't feel like I can give a recommendation at this point because I haven't really put it through its paces. I've messed around with it, but I haven't even used it for a paid video shoot yet. That's something that's gonna be coming up over the next few months more and more for me. But I like it so far. If the legs last, if the mechanism can truly last for a long time, if this tripod is still functioning in 10 to 20 years, I think that I was a genius for buying the tripod because at that point, it would have saved me dozens and dozens of hours of adjusting tripods. It would have given me more access to the shots that I actually want with more speed and time is money in this business. You could miss the moment if you're busy adjusting to a higher shot to get over someone who's in front of you. There it's quick and I'm shooting again. So that's the big question for me, the durability. Is it truly gonna last? I saw a video, the first review that came into Amazon was someone who once they received the tripod, they actually had one of the legs sticking where when they would pull that quick release, it was like this. Two of the legs would drop, one of the legs wouldn't drop and they'd have to actually manually pull it down. So I'm a little concerned about that, to be honest. I don't know 
how well this tripod is going to do with regards to durability. Been shooting on a field that has sand everywhere and there's a little bit of sand that's on these legs. Is it gonna be okay? Because with a normal video tripod, it might get a little gritty, but those mechanisms are gonna keep working for a very, very long time. So that's my concern with this. I hope that it's the case that this lasts a very long time and I'm able to use it for the next 10 or 20 years. But if it doesn't, I'm gonna be a little upset, but I knew that was a risk going into this. It was very possible that this tripod might be not that long-term investment, but the technology is so cool that I wanted to get in early on the action. And I wanted to have the very first version of this tripod for the work that I'm doing. So again, thanks for watching the video. Hope this video has been helpful to you. Make sure to put a thumbs up on it and drop a comment and subscribe for more content like this. I'm gonna be reviewing video equipment going forward. If you're a business, if you're a company that sells video equipment and you'd like me to take a look at something, shoot me an email and I'll put that email down in the description of the video. Talk to you guys in the next one. Bye.